Present. Mr. Steigel. Present. Mr. Ball. Present. Mr. Kozer. Present. Mr. Lewis. Here. Mr. Arcuri is excused this evening. Mr. Berkowitz. Here. Rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Right. shows what I know. Good evening. Long hike. Well, now Mr. O'Curry is unexcused. <laughs> the last meeting I had come back and I was supposed to quarantine, so I tried to separate. Yeah. Okay, first item is the approval of the uh, transcript of the 2020 budget amendment of the period. So moved. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, next item is approval of the transcript of the 21 budget public hearing held so, on the 23rd. So moved. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Next item is approval of the minutes from the council meeting held on December 14th. So moved. Second. Discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, special reports. Uh, Mr. Ball, just uh, very quickly before we do special reports, since this public comments relate to uh, this particular special report, um, we did get three comments in, uh, one from Amanda Cribbs of the Environmental Quality Board, um, who had some questions about the use of herbicide along the uh, Arrowhead Trail. We got another comment from Deborah Berger of 110 Evans Drive. Um, expressing her opinion that uh, chemical clearing of public land should always be the last option uh, for use of herbicide along the Arrowhead Trail. And we got a final comment from Lynn Corey Roberts, uh, also expressing her concern about the use of herbicide along the Arrowhead Trail and the subsequent environmental impacts of that. I uh, just wanted to uh, bring those to light, obviously, in light of uh, this special report. Um, going off of that, uh, <clears throat> Officials from West Penn Power have approached us regarding their 2021 vegetation management program uh, as it relates to Peters Township. There's a transmission line that par parallels the Arrowhead Trail from roughly the horse farm here at Sugar Camp, runs all the way up to the Bethel Park Peters Township line. Um, vegetation management along this corridor was previously performed in 2016 using exclusively cutting and pruning. The easement agreement between Peters Township and West Penn Power for this transmission line prohibits the use of herbicide along the stretch of Arrowhead Trail. Due to the regrowth of vegetation cut in 2016, uh, Marie Myro and Jacob Fisher of West Penn Power are here tonight to ask permission uh, to use herbicide along this stretch of their transmission line. Um, one point I'd just like to make. In addition to these comments, there were some questions from the Montour Trail Council from roughly Brush Run Road, uh, which is right here north. This unpaved section of the trail is maintained by the Peters Friends of the, Mont uh, Peters Friends of the Montour Trail, and uh, we informed them of this as well. They had some questions that uh, Marie was kind enough to respond to, so I'll turn it over to them. Is everybody familiar with this trail? Have you yes, gone out and enjoyed it? I live on it. Yeah. You live on it. Very good. It's a great place. Sort of. to, great place to be. Uh, which one do I? Uh, you click right. Uh, so we had held a field meeting a few weeks ago uh, with Ryan and some other members from the town. Um, to review this work. It's a little easier to see when you're in, in the field to judge height on vegetation. Uh, I tried to get some good pictures. So just to review the couple different sections of work that we want to do stuff in is, uh, so the first section is where the uh, line crosses the trail just north of the horse farm. And this section in particular has um, Quite a, few in, quite a few invasive species on it. There's buckthorn and some uh, tree of heaven and some other invasive species in this section. You can see the density that's in this area. It's quite dense. It's very difficult to walk through. Um, species are 10 to 15 foot high, just to kind of give you an idea of, this, of the size. Uh, the next section is north of uh, Brush Run Road. And this vegetation was cut to the ground in 2016. No herbicides were applied. 
Uh, and as you can see, uh, we have species that are back to being 10 to 20 foot tall again. Uh, that's a concern for us. You can see where the wires are, the conductors are in relation to the vegetation. Uh, this could be an outage for us and, and uh, affects our reliability and safety for the lawn. Um, those are mostly walnut trees. There's a few locust, black locust trees in there which are considered invasive as well. So just to summarize what the work plan is, uh, normally off the right of way, the only time we target a tree is if it's uh, dead disease dying and can impact our line. So we mark those trees for removal. Uh, any trees that are coming, growing in from the side that are healthy, uh, but they're within a clearance to our wire that we have to maintain, we mark those for trims. So this is just a summary of the entire section that runs through Peters. Uh, so there'll be 85 off corridor removals. Most of these trees are small, but they're within our clearance. If we trim them, they're gonna end up dying. Uh, or there's not gonna be much left of them. So it's just better to remove a lot of those smaller ones instead of just trimming them. Um, only 10 of these trees are what most people would consider larger trees. Uh, they're dead disease dying. There's something wrong with them and they're tall enough to impact our line when they fall over. So that's why they were targeted for removal. Um, there was nine trees that are found to be on the corridor, which we don't normally allow trees to remain on corridor, so those were targeted for removal. Um, 55 trees will be trimmed for clearance, so they're perfectly healthy. They're just too close to our wires. Uh, we're going to be using a bucket for some of this. On north of Brush Run Road, it's accessible with a bucket. Uh, trees in the unmaintained area uh, will just be diced down. We drop the tree, take the limbs off, dice the branches down so they degrade a lot quicker, uh, and leave the logs in a limb and leave them safely so they don't impact the fire. Trees that are in maintained areas, uh, we're going to be chipping if we can get a chipper to it, uh, or drag down to other uh, maintained areas. If we can't get a chipper in there, we'll drag the debris out of a maintained area and dice it down in an unmaintained area. So that's just kind of a review of the, of the tree work. Are there any questions about that? This is what we would normally do for, for our vegetation program. There's a lot of, com the comments that came in were primarily negative, and the people that we talked to about using the herbicides. Okay. Can you talk a little bit, you're asking for a two-year application, is, is what I understand. Is that what you want, this 21 and 22? Due to the density of the brush, uh, what we would like to do is just cut it all to the ground. Uh, and start from scratch. We would like to treat the ground, it's called a cut stubble application, and that prevents most of the woody vegetation from re-sprouting and returning, and then that way we don't have to go through this again in five years. Uh, but due to the density that's there, we're not gonna be able to control all of the vegetation in one application. So we would like to come back in 2022 and just do a touch-up application. Uh, it would be, uh, crew members with backpacks, it's called low volume foliar. So we have guys with backpack sprayers on and they, they spot treat stuff. They don't spray like this. They find the piece of vegetation that is woody and cannot stay and that's all they treat. So the grasses and wildflowers that are coming back in the rest of the area, they're gonna be allowed to continue to grow. They won't be targeted. So. How far into the woods would you be going as far as cutting and then her, uh, applying herbicide? Uh, the right of way width for this, it, it, it depends on where you are on the line. Uh, the standard width for this voltage is 65 total feet, so it's about 32 feet from center, uh, so 32 and a half feet on each side of the poles. So in some places the trees are right up against there, other places the trees are back a little further. For danger trees, we have no limit on how far back we go into the woods. If the tree is tall enough and it's bad and it can impact our line, we need to remove it. Uh, on the right of way though, we maintain all of the woody vegetation uh, to not, not grow in that area. So that would be 65 total feet from edge to edge. I think though perhaps just for the herbicide application, it would be within the transmission right of way. We're not looking to go back into the woods doing any 
herbicide application if that helps answer your question. It does. It does. And what type of herbicide are you using? So all the products we are going to be using, they're known as selective chemistry. Can you speak closer to the mic there? Yeah. Sure. So all the products we're going to be using are known as selective chemistry. So they will control broadleaf, plant species, woody vegetation, like Marie stated. And what that does is it will allow grasses, wildflowers, ferns, forbs to regenerate in the right of way. The picture in the upper right hand column is a great example of after we do this application, you could expect to see that look to the right of way. If you want to know this, do you want to know the specific herbicides we'll be using? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, there's, there's a, I think, a, um, there's a concern on the part of our residents that, you know, that the herbicides, you know, they, they have a picture of, you know, Agent Orange or something. And, um, you know, that, that I think herbicides have come a long way since we, we entered into this agreement. And they're, I know they're more selective. And uh, so can you, can you discuss a little what the, what the toxi toxicity level of these herbicides are? Oh, I, go ahead, Marie. So the, the first point is that what most people think when they think of herbicide and they have an issue with it is the bottom right-hand corner. So it's foliar application in the middle of the summertime. You're left with standing dead. That definitely looks like it was recently controlled. Uh, that's not what we're proposing. We're going to be hand-cutting the vegetation to the ground and treating the ground. And the following year, the follow-up application, most of the vegetation that's going to re-sprout is only going to be a couple feet tall. And at that point in time, the brush on the right-hand side, that's 20-foot tall vegetation that was recently treated. So the brown out that most people associated and the negative comments people have with, uh, with most herbicide is the foliar application aspect. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're, we're not going to do that on the trail. And how, how dangerous are these herbicides? Uh, all the herbicides are, are EPA-registered herbicides. Uh, all of our applicators are licensed applicators. Uh, the re relative toxicity for the herbicides, if for butterflies, pollinators, it's all it's all low. It's like zero or one on a scale of like one to five. Um, out of all the pesticide classes, herbicides are going to be the least harmful to people. Um, as Jake explained, the herbicides are selective chemistry. They work by uh, interfering or interacting with the hormones that are only found in plants. Uh, people structure, human structure, cell structure is a completely different cell structure than plant cell structure. Hormones are completely different. So the way it works is by affecting hormones that are in the plants and not in people. Um, so like an insecticide, we share a lot of similar characteristics with insects. Insecticides are much more toxic for people than herbicides are. These are applied in quantities that they're likely or unlikely to spread out from the sprayed area? Uh, we go by the label rate, uh, that the label is the law, if you know pesticides. Um, the way the herbicides work, specifically the cut stubble mix that we want to use mostly, is to re prevent the re-sprouting. So they're formulated to stay where they're put. If they washed away, they wouldn't be doing the job that they're put there to do. Uh, so there's no off-site migration. It's not going to show up, you know, five miles away or even 30 feet away in somebody's yard. It's not going to, like, leach down the ground and, and go and kill somebody's grass. They, they stay where they're put for a reason. Uh, these that's how they these are all liquid? or Yes. And how many years does this buy you? Because yeah, I know... I remember when I, the last time you guys were here, I believe it was my first meeting on council, and I was the only one that supported letting you guys do it because I figured you'd be back here in a few years when the trees grew back, and you are five years later. So if, you, if we allow you to spray it, how many years is that going to buy you? You're going to be back here in 10 or 15? Our, our maintenance cycle is every five. Uh, so right now, without using herbicide on this trail, I actually have to come in here every three years and do work. Not to the extent that we're doing it right now, but I have to do what we call it hot spotting. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of pop-up danger areas that are not lasting our five-year cycle because we're restricted on the use of herbicide. 
Uh, so if we are allowed to use the herbicide, it'll, it'll make the five-year cycle stick, hopefully, to the five-year cycle. Uh, and it'll make it less impactful. Like right now, we're going to be cutting 20-foot tall brush. If we can do the application, the initial ground application, and then follow up with the low volume foliar, then in five year cycle, then we should only have stuff that's as tall and not 20 foot tall again, and not have to come back through and completely cut everything down. It won't be as impactful. I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt Marie here, but two points. I want to just circle back to what you said about the toxicity real quick. Um, if you would look at the label on windshield washer fluid that you put in your vehicle, it will say danger, poison. If you ingest it, this could, will kill you. If you look at the labels on our herbicides, they'll say caution. If you got the um, active ingredient on you, it could cause a rash. If you splashed it in your eye, it could cause eye irritation. So I don't know if that helps address any of your toxicity concerns. Mm -hmm. And then to your question, sir, about how much time does it buy us, I think Marie answered it well in the fact that we're always going to be doing maintenance every five years. Our goal here, though, is to lessen our maintenance, but also lessen the impact to the trail. So this year, the amount of work, cutting all this brush, we're going to be out there for probably two, three months on the entire trail, maybe just a month in Peters Township. And that's going to be a lot of time where we're going to have to shut the trail down because of safety reasons. We've got guys with chainsaws, chippers. Um, but if we can work together, apply the herbicides, come back in two years, do the touch up, and get that grassy, low growth vegetation look. Perhaps in five years, like Marie stated, it's a guy with a backpack going through in one day, selectively targeting stems versus this extensive amount of work that we have now. So if you use the herbicides, you're not going to have to close the trail? If this year, yes, we're going to have to close it because for, of for all the work. But in future, for just maintaining the brush, now there might be some closure involved with trimming trees, cutting trees, but just for herbicide application, a guy could go through in one day with a backpack, and really you wouldn't have to close the trail. And what I'm asking, so this year, if we approve the herbicide use, how long will you close the trail? This year, with or without herbicide, just in Peters Township, I'm going to estimate a couple, three to four weeks out there. Total closure. No. Inter From intervals. access to access point, we're going to close it down in the sections as we're working. That way, when people no, come into a parking lot. Again, if you close one section, you, it's, it's closed. You can't work around you. Well, you could turn around and go the other way, but well, well, you won't, you won't <laughs> cut 24-7, will you? No, no. We, okay. We sent a, uh, uh, did I, I sent you the posting that we were going to do for the trail. Yeah. Uh, it's, most of our work is done Monday through Friday from 7 o'clock in the morning to about 6 o'clock at night. Oh, so weekends it would be. Yeah, tip, we don't work weekends, and typically the guys don't work Friday. But if we get completely rained out on a Monday, then chances are. Gotcha. Be okay. Friday. Thank you. And I presume if we let you guys apply the herbicides, you can put up some signs while you're doing it or something so that people know that this is going on. Can I ask another question, though, just to clarify? You said it is not harmful to humans. Well, minimally, depending. But people walk their dogs. It says pets in here. Well, that's what I was going to say. For the people listening who are concerned, how, how would be for pets? If you're, you're walking your dog after you've treated, what kind of problems? They're, the herbicides that we use, the formulas that we're going to use, they're all registered for pasture use. The EPA doesn't test on like domesticated animals. Like you're talking about like spraying something and a horse That's eating it or a cow eating it, it's it's approved for pasture use, so it's not toxic to the animals. Now it's not. And ma'am, even walking your dog um, or your pet through there. 
Last year, just in the area I maintained, we treated over 10,000 acres with these same products and deer are out there, rabbits, turkeys, yeah, you name it. And it's, um, there's some info in the packet where there's a lot of studies the habitat it creates, the benefits to wildlife, pollinators, bees are a big one, butterflies, pollinators are another big one. Well, as I'm looking back at this, and obviously there was an agreement with West Penn Power in 1986 that granted this easement but precluded herbicides. Obviously, I think we can all agree that herbicides have come a long way since 1986, and we're not talking about the same dangers that we would have dealt with in 1986. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve First Energy's request to use herbicides on specifically targeted wooded vegetation areas of the trail for 2021 and 2022, subject to all other conditions in terms of the easement remaining in effect. It being understood that this is a one-time grant from us. If they want to do this again, they have to come back for any further permission and that all signs will be posted indicating that the herbicides are being applied. Does that include the indemnification provision in the agreement? Yes. I'll second. Okay, move and second it under discussion. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Nay. Roll call. Nay. It's 4 3. It was it 4 3? It was 4 3. Were you a yay? Yeah, it's a 4, it's four right. 3. Who, who are the A's? Everybody but Mr. Paul. The three Chris. of us. Okay, four three. All right. Okay. So we move on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Unfinished business. Oh, we do have one more audience comment. I, I did not read um, before that presentation. It was from uh, Mr. Ron Books. Uh, he was asking that uh, Peters Township start planning and implementing a COVID-19 vaccination program um, and gave some recommendations regarding use of the community center um, for vaccinations, uh, use of EMT staff and re retired health care workers. So. Do we have any capability of doing that? No. I don't think so. Well, was he talking about just making our facilities available as a potential inoculation? I think site? that's what he's talking about. I think that's what he's talking about. Yeah, I mean, if, if that's, up, that's up to the uh, medical facilities, you know, the, the people that administer it. If they come to us and ask if they can use it, I'm sure we'd be happy to consider it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it sounds like he's suggesting that we try to reach out and offer that. I mean, we have Allegheny General here in the township yeah. who apparently has gotten vaccines. I don't so. think it's exactly uh, overwhelming. So, I mean, we say if Well, I'm just saying, you know, we have a large senior population that might facilitate our <clears throat> ability. Yeah. I mean, my, my only concern would just be that, I mean, it is a community center. It is not a, obviously a pharmacy or a, or a hospital or any place like that. So, I, yeah, that, that would be yeah. a concern it's on my end. Things to ask. So we have to yeah. talk about it. Fair. Hey, I got my polio stuff in the middle school. Yeah, so did I. So, I mean, so wherever, I. You know, wherever you need it, if they need it, I'm sure we would approve something like that. Some of us got it for elementary school. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, think I don't understand the comments. Huh? The rec uh, center's not been used for its intended purpose. Baseball association. The rec center's busy all the time. The uh, grass field, the Venetian Park, and the baseball yeah. fields. Yes. Uh, the Peters Township Baseball Association has been working closely with Michelle Harmel to identify uh, new baseball fields for them to use since they lost access to the field at Pleasant Valley School. Mm -hmm. They've identified this grassy field that was previously used by the Peters Township Soccer Association at Venetia Park as an ideal location. Uh, the Soccer Association no longer uses this field now that they've got the turf fields at Field 5 of Peterswood Park. Uh, Ms. Harmel explained to them that uh, should they want to move forward with this, the project would have to be designed to the township standard and would have to be built through the township's bidding process, uh, something they were amenable to. The Recreation Board uh, at their previous meeting in November had recommended that Council approve the conversion of the multi-use field at Venetia Park into two new baseball fields. So um, it's my recommendation uh, that Peters Township Council authorize uh, the Township Manager to negotiate and execute an agreement with the Peters Township Baseball Association for design and construction of two new baseball fields at Venetia Park. Okay. 
Do we, Ryan, do we yeah. have any idea what the scope of the project would involve? Because I would presume afterward maintenance would fall to the township yes. in some regard. Yeah, I, I mean, you're, you're looking at fields similar to this one here in terms of size. Uh, just that's about the only two that can fit there. Um, the agreement itself would, would be uh, an understanding of to what standard the, the field is being built to, the fact that the township would have ownership of the facilities but would, there, would, give the, um, would allow the Baseball Association to use them, and in addition to that, it would set up the reimbursement terms um, for the construction of this particular, uh, of these two fields. Well, nobody uses that, that old soccer field anymore? No. What, what level of... Baseball, uh, T ball, it's T ball, and uh, the age right above T ball that I don't really have the specific name for. Yeah, it's yeah. probably big enough for that. Yeah, all right. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the transfer of that field to uh, the Baseball Association. I'll Set. second the motion, but I do have one last question. Go. Will, will council have any um, ability to um, weigh in on the design? For example, <clears throat> will they add a fence right away? Will they be doing bleachers? Will they be doing dugouts? And we can bring, I mean, the, the final design of the baseball field would come back through the recreation board. If council wants to see it, we can certainly present it well, before I, council as well. Personally, I don't think there should be lights. Whatever they do, there shouldn't be lights. Okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't imagine that for T-ball personally and for the ages they're talking about. Well, no, that's I know they should be in bed by that time. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that we could start. Well, what about a scoreboard? I don't, I don't think there's one down there now. They, they don't use that for T-ball. Not for T-ball. Yeah, yeah. That's mostly no. T-ball. Yeah. Kids. I don't mm -hmm. have a problem with it. All right. So, so I seconded the motion. Okay, moved and seconded in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Um, next item is a change, younger group. change yeah. order number one and settlement agreement yeah. related to the site work on the playground and shelter number two, uh, replacement of Peterson Park. So at our last council meeting, you, proved, you approved an extension of a grant with the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources for this project um, to allow the township manager time with the solicitor to negotiate a, a favorable settlement agreement with the site contractor, DePasqual Construction. Uh, I emailed um, uh, council earlier today and before you tonight as well is uh, that settlement agreement that both that, that Mr. Lauer, Mr. Smith, and I all feel accomplishes this effort. Um, the agreement releases both parties from claims of monetary compensation for the project beyond the balance of the uh, balance due to DePasqual construction, and it reduces the value of the contract represented by change order number one by $2,500. Uh, the one point I would make that once you add this change order uh, into the equation, the total cost of the project uh, performed by DPASC wall construction was $77,000 lower than the second lowest bidder for it. So um, it's my recommendation that Peters Township Council approve change order number one for the Peterswood Park Development Project and authorize the appropriate township officials to enter into a settlement agreement with DPASC wall construction services. Um, just real fast, Mr. Ball, had reached out to me before the meeting. He had some uh, grammatical and, and uh, not significant changes to the agreement that have been incorporated into it. That is what's before you tonight. Discussion? Did they have any subs or anything that they used on this project? They claim they do not. And there's, there's a demonification language, but I can't find it right now. I'm sure somebody can. No, there is no, there is no indemnification language beyond, beyond what was in the original contract documents. Is there a complete settlement on this? All right. Well, yeah. I'll move that we uh, uh, approve change order number one for the Peterswood Park Development Project and authorize the appropriate township officials to enter into a settlement agreement with De Pasquale Construction Services, LLC. Second. Other discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, next item is the approval for reporting purposes of the overall updated subdivision for Peters Township and Peters Township School District as shown on the drawings prepared by HRG dated November 2020 for Rolling Hills Drive. 
So uh, in November of 2018, Peters Township Council approved the subdivision of the Rolling Hills property that roughly goes from here and follows Rolling Hills Drive down to East McMurray Road. The subdivision that's before you tonight um, regards, uh, regards um, <clears throat> the PennDOT right-of-way, the right-of-way that we're deeding to PennDOT for East McMurray Road that's uh, detailed here. Um, the Planning Commission's previously reviewed this and, and approved it uh, pending review by the uh, Washington County Planning Commission and a tax ID for Lot 2 uh, being revised. It's my recommendation, Peters Township Council approve the overall updated subdivision plan for Peters Township and the Peters Township School District as shown on drawings prepared by HRG Incorporated dated November 2020, subject to completion of both conditions stipulated by the Planning so Commission. Moved. Second. Second. Um, Discussion. Just a quick question, Mr. Jorowski. Mm -hmm. The Peters Township School District has to also agree to this or accept it, or is it just up to us to? It's just up to the township. I mean, we have to deed right of way for the roadway to PennDOT, so it, it's exclusively up to the township. Were there any concerns about issues related to how it was divided with them? Mark. <laughs> there was a reference in the docket to some discussion with them about this division. What is... Uh... In the solicitor's report. Did that have some bearing on this? No. Okay, that's my question. Okay. Other discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Approval okay. um, for recording purposes of Anthony Farms, phase three, first revision is shown on drawings prepared by J.R. Gales and Associates, taken November 2. Peter's Township Land Company. So all we're doing here, Ryan, is moving the line, right? Yes, you're moving this orange line to where the blue line is now for lot 311R. All right, move we approve the Anthony <laughs> Farms Phase 3 first revision as shown on drawings prepared by J.R. Gales and Associates dated November 2nd, 2020 for Peter's Township Land Company. Second. Uh, discussion? Favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Closed. I assume he just needs more room from the corner of the structure. It's not. There's a lot of coverage issue. You oh, okay. can only cover 15% of the house and earth. The aim is for the building is slightly over that, so it'll be a little bit more lighter. Okay. Um, payroll and bills? Uh, Mr. Chairman, there was no payroll run this particular time because it's only been a week between. Yeah. So it's just the accounts payable bills. Um, several payments were for the brine system, which we're glad to have with the snow. And to Mr. Burquist's question last month, uh, last week, there were several refunds for programs for people who either canceled or withdrew. Um, there is a credit card statement in the docket. Mr. Jaroski was kind enough to answer a few questions I had. Uh, do any of you have any particular questions for him about that? Okay. Um, in total, with the additional checks that were just signed tonight, the payroll, the accounts payable, excuse me, was about 700000 I move that we... Um, approve the bills and pay them as submitted. Second. Discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, is there any relative correspondence? No. Uh, reports? Anybody want to discuss any reports? Okay, um, excuse me, one thing. Um, I would like to thank you for the finance report. Um, mm -hmm. In the body of that, mm -hmm. you did share with us what was finally submitted to CARES. Yes. And what we anti we hopefully anticipate getting back. Mm -hmm. Has there been any um, insight no. from the county since no. <laughs> since Friday? No. no. Um, uh, in fairness to them, they are preparing. The, I mean, they're finalizing their budget for one and two. Uh, the finance department just they just acquired a building in Washington, so oh, did they I know they're it? I know they're very busy right now. But we're hoping. Uh, I've called them. I'm waiting to hear back. Okay, so it seems like we got about eighty some percent of what we were yes. initially. That was pretty. As of this afternoon, they had not. So. Yeah. Yeah. But that was pretty good for the scrambling that you had to do. So thank you for the finance report. Mm -hmm. um, I did have another comment in the solicitor's report. I had asked before about the transfer of property on Valley Brook Road. Yes. From Mr. Robinson to the township, mm -hmm. as part of the lease for that property, and that apparently was also concluded. Yes. So that was the thing I wanted to just say we had completed. Mm -hmm. uh, miscellaneous. Uh, uh, well, since we, we finished our interviews for the library board, I think we had three great candidates. I'll move that we appoint Beth Markosik to the library board. Second. 
Discussion? Just a comment, if we could thank Kathleen McAvoy, who has uh, decided not to reapply. She served on the board, and we thank her for her service. Okay, thank you very much. And did a second, did we? I, it oh. was my second. All right. Uh, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to abstain since I, I wasn't here for either of the, oh, okay. the, the, the interviews. All righty. Uh, she was, she she was, was a good appointment there. Most impressive candidate. Uh, I saw her resume. It looked good. No, anything, anything else for uh, Ms. Lanius? Um, I did want to ask Mr. Jaroski, um, last meeting I questioned the um, pay scale mm -hmm. numbers and mm -hmm. uh, commented that it looked like 2.5% instead of 2.25%. Yes. Can you enlighten It's been, yeah, it's, it has been revived. It was 2.5%. Council approved it with the understanding of 2.25%. So uh, we've revised the um, numbers to reflect 2.25% uh, in the actual ordinance. And that was actually the fact sheet recap for this meeting, for your last meeting, reflected 2.25%. So. I didn't mean to micromanage. I just wanted to make sure. No problem. Okay. I, I did have a question about the police report. I, I see in there that somebody stole a golf club worth Valley Brook. For, it was worth seven thousand dollars. And Jim, did you get it back? That was my question. <laughs> Haven't gotten it back yet. It's a it's a signed. Uh, it's a uh, Dave. What's that real expensive putter? A uh, Scotty Cameron, Cameron signed by uh, oh, uh, the pro from Pittsburgh. Uh, the, uh, Anyhow, yeah. I thought it was that one like Roddy Dangerfield had, had the <laughs> visor yeah. tap and it, yeah. you know. Yeah. My question is why would you put a $7,000 club yeah. in your bag? Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't use it, or he or she doesn't no. use it. Oh, no. Okay, anything for next agenda? Which would be what? January. January. January 4th. January 4th. Okay. No executive session? No. Okay, we are. Oh,